This video is all about scents. We're going to be talking about the different types of scents, how different species of fish are attracted to different scents, and we're going to do a comparison. We're going to fish one lure that is scented against another lure that is unscented to see if one catches more fish than the other. Nice little trout. Scared off my reds though. There we go. Put him up. Yeah, my reds are gone. Hopefully they'll pop back up. Wet my hands before I grab him. There we go. That is a quality trout. So I am out here doing a uh, an experiment where I'm actually seeing if scent makes a difference. So I'm using a gulp versus an unscented lure to see if one actually makes a difference. That is a nice looking trout right there. So let me go ahead and let him go. <laughs> He's ready to go. And uh, we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about if scent really does make a difference. Okay, so we got that fish released and I had to do a little re-rigging here. So I want to explain what I'm doing out here. You know, there's always that, you know, debate out there whether scents make a difference or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare two lures that are, you know, pretty much as close as I can. And I'm going to put them on the same rigs. We're going to do five casts with one. We're going to do five casts with another. And we're just going to fish today and see if one makes a difference, at least on this day, if the scent makes a difference. Uh, so what I'm using is I've got slam sticks. These are the salt strong uh, slam sticks, seven foot, or excuse me, seven foot six medium power uh otis 2500 so same reels same rods uh the line is a little bit different it's the same diameter line the same brand one's gray one's green i don't think that makes a difference i've done a lot of experiments with uh, uh line colors i really hadn't noticed anything so i don't think uh, that's much of a variable but the leaders are the same and uh the rigging is the same so i've got both of these uh rigged on a one eighth ounce uh, that is the Haas Round Eye. That's on both of these. And this one is the Gulp Dragon Tail. That's a new lure that came out. That's that new soft twitch bait. And I'm uh, comparing that to uh, the Salt Strong Mulligan, which is our four-inch paddle tail, uh, which I pulled that little tail off of it. It used to be a paddle tail. Uh, pulling that tail off makes it a jerk bait. So profiles are really similar. The colors are similar. They're not exact, but you know, between you know lure manufacturers, it's hard to you know line up the exact same color. So, but I think that's close enough to do a uh, an experiment. And I think really the difference between the two is going to be the smell. Now, normally with the um, with the salt strong lures, I always put Dr. Juice on. But uh, this, I actually took a bag of them and I cleaned them with a um, unscented soap to get any residual smells that might be on them uh, with the packaging uh, scent that they put in there. And this is the gulp. This is the one that everybody knows about. Super strong scent. And uh, we're gonna, you know, compare these two and see if it's gonna make a difference today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about, uh, you know, different types of scents, the philosophies behind them, and you know, we'll just dive into that whole subject of, you know, what is scent? Why is it important? Okay, so first thing that we should do is talk about smells. Are they are they even important? Can a fish even smell? And uh, the quick answer is absolutely, they can smell. There's been studies uh, done on the way that a fish's um, olfactory senses, the way that they smell, actually works. Now, with humans, your olfactory senses have to go through the nerves. It has to go through a couple different channels to actually make it to your brain. Now, in a fish, these same senses, the senses that actually, uh, the nerves that actually smell, are directly attached to the brain. So, not only can they smell, they can smell really well. And there's so many different olfactory nerves in there, the, the quantity, the amount of them, uh, some actually say that they smell better than dogs. Now, dogs, you know, they, you know, has been, you know, the common phrase is they can smell 10,000 times better than a human being, and they say fish can actually smell better than dogs. So, uh, that's something to think about. So, I do believe scents come into play for sure. Uh, you know, especially uh, the type of fish, and, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, whenever we're talking about scents, we need to address there's different types of scents. Not all scents are built the same. So, the first scent that we have, um, you know, the one that's really popular, the one that everybody knows about, that's gulp. Uh, and gulp is basically a water-based product. So the plastic that gulp is made out of uh, is actually water-based. And what that allows it to do, it allows it to soak up that gulp juice uh, that has that fish attractant that they've, uh, that they've made, and it disperses it really well into the water. Now, there are pros and cons to this uh, type of plastic, uh, you know, one being that uh, they're, they're kind of fragile. Uh, you go through gulp. Uh, but the advantage is the fact that, you know, it 
dispenses that scent in the water column really, really well. Uh, so, you know, obviously gives and takes. Now, the next type that you'll see is going to be a uh, gel style and uh, a, a common name brand is going to be Procure. Now, Procure, the advantages of that is uh, you can get a custom tailor to uh, whatever you want. So if you want blue crab, if you want menhaden, if you want shrimp, you know, they make that. And basically what it's made with is uh, is bits and pieces of whatever product that is. Uh, there's, you know, pr proprietary scents that are in there too, but, uh, you know, the gist of it is you can kind of custom tailor it. So the negative side of that is some of your, you know, especially the, the competition is going to tell you that the negative side to having the gel scent with a bait inside of it is it's made with dead material and that dead material is actually a turnoff to some of the fish. Uh, you know, especially your predatory fish that are after their prey, their ambush type predators, uh, that, you know, they don't like that dead smell. And and uh, the scavengers, so your stingrays, your catfish, and stuff like that, uh, might be more attracted to that type of scent. Uh, and, and again, you know, you have to listen to both sides of the story, so I can understand both. Now, the other style is going to be an oil base. That's going to be something like the Dr. Juice that, uh, that we sell here at Solstrong. Uh, the advantages of an oil-based product is the fact that it can encapsulate the lure that you're, that you're putting it on. So what happens is it hides that negative smell. So if the whole thing is encapsulated, in that oil anything that's underneath that is not going to escape as well as say with a water-based scent or with a gel based scent where you can't get the whole thing covered uh, so there's the advantage of that now one thing about dr. juice also is uh, it has other things in it, just like other you know the some of the other brands that has amino acids and what happens is if you notice uh, look at Italian dressing that's both water and oil based if you let it sit on the shelf it separates you know you've got a separation between the two but if you shake it up it mixes well same thing with uh, an oil based Based scent like Dr. Juice. It has the amino, amino acids and other scents that are in that water-based portion and when you put it on your lure what happens is that water-based scent that that water-based part of it is going to seep out slowly just like that uh, Italian dressing bottle uh, if you let it sit long enough it's going to start separating so that's how it releases its scent so you get the advantage of the scent being released and the advantage of the negative cells being encapsulated in that oil so that's your three different styles of scents that you have uh, that's the major ones out there and that's typically the ones that we're going to focus on so today i'm going to be using the gulp against basically nothing you know zero cent at all and uh, we're going to see how this works out okay so i found a group of reds there i made a cast i had, yeah I, I blew the cast i should have pulled it uh when i saw it in midair and i landed right on top of them uh, so i'm seeing if maybe they'll pop back up i think it was that same group of reds that i was casting at before when i caught that trout um, so i'm not really working the area i'm just seeing if these uh, fish will settle down See those tails come back up. Yep, there they are right there. Well, that did not work out the way that I intended it. Had two bad casts. Uh, spooked them off, so I'm just going to keep working on the shoreline. If I don't see anything there, I'll turn back around and see if maybe they settle back down and pop back up. So we're going to keep at this, see what we can find. Okay, I think it's time to make a move. Um, not really seeing much feeding activity, not seeing any bait, so... I'm going to pull out my uh, Smart Fishing Spot tab, take a look at the area. I'm not really familiar with this place. I've been here a couple times, but I don't know it like I know a lot of areas. So I'm just going to kind of poke around and see if I see some things that I like, looking for depth changes and uh, something uh, it's got some deep water that's near some shallow flats. Uh, kind of looks like that island right there is the way to go. So uh, I'm going to head over there and see what we can find. There we go. Nice little red. That pod was a little bit bigger than I thought. I thought there's only about four or five of them in there, but uh, I cast it a little bit away. There's some over there. There's some more right there. They're pretty cool. That one right there. Okay, so that one is on the gulp. This <laughs> this one's on the gulp, I should say. And uh, so that's two for the gulp. But to be honest with you, uh, both fish that I've caught, I've been sight casting too. So um, I haven't had a chance to sight cast with a non-scented lure uh, to these fish uh, just because you know I'm rotating out five casts with one five casts with the other and it was just time to to throw this one so hopefully I can uh, run across the same thing uh, find some more tailing fish and throw that non-scented one to see if this makes a difference so, but so far two nothing there we go that's the uh, gulp dragon tail let me put this down He's a pretty fish. Look at that. Look at that colors on him. Absolutely gorgeous. 
Got that blue tail with that black on the back of it. So after releasing that fish, I want to go ahead and use that as a break and talk about the next subject, and that is going to be uh, species and, and how scents might affect different species and how they behave. So here at Salt Strong, you know, our, our four big species is going to be redfish, sea trout, snook, and flounder. And each one kind of behaves a little bit differently. Uh, if you take trout, for instance, spotted sea trout, they're a sight type of uh, predator. Uh, they like that cleaner water. Uh, they use their vision really well uh, when it comes to catching their prey. Uh, they, they see motion. They see contrast. So using scent with sea trout might not be as important uh, other than maybe, you know, hiding some negative smells. Uh, but as far as fish attracting, um, you know, maybe, maybe not so much. Now, same thing with snook. Snook are the same kind of thing. They are a sight predator. You know, they're around docks, they're around rocks, seawalls, you know, any type of hard structure. Again, so they can ambush their prey and then come back out. Uh, so they use their sight a lot and they're actually really, uh, really good with twilight and even evening, you know, low light situations. They do really well. So maybe, you know, scent might not be as important unless you have some sort of negative smell. So you got something on your hands, maybe some gas, bug spray, sunscreen, something like that. Maybe a scent like an oil-based scent that can cover that uh, might help out with that. Now let's talk about redfish. Now redfish, if you think about it, they're, they can be scavengers. Yes, they are a predator, but uh, you know, a lot of times the reason why they're tailing is they're milling around in that grass and in that mud and they're looking for shrimp, they're looking for, you know, marine worms, anything like that. And uh, they can, you know, be scavengers when it comes to finding dead stuff. So scent is a little bit more important, I believe, when it comes to uh, redfish, you know, um, black drum, that's another one. Uh, scent is really important when it comes to black drum. Uh, so I think when you're fishing for that, you know, not only are we using that scent to maybe mask some negative odors, I think that scent can actually be an attractant. And uh, I, you know, it's one of the reasons why I believe in scent so much. Now when it comes to flounder, flounder are also a sight predator too. They lay flat on the bottom. They're waiting for anything to get, you know, uh, brought by them in that current. They come up, they grab it, they go right back down to the bottom. And, you know, they, they use their sight. However, there are a lot of people that swear by scented plastics uh, when it comes to fishing for them. But I will say this, I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of underwater footage of flounder and they have a really bad habit. I shouldn't say habit, but you know, it's, it's really common for them to follow that bait and to trail behind that bait. So if you have a scented lure, and it's giving off that scent, then that fish is going to use that as information to verify that this is prey, that this is something that I can eat. It's not just a piece of trash floating in the water. And that's what, you know, that's what they'll do. They'll, they'll eat it. They'll make that decision to, to eat it. So that's another reason why I think scent is important, but you got to think about the way that, you know, uh, the fish that you're after are going to uh, operate, how they feed, how they find their, their prey. If they're sight predators, then maybe it's not so important to have that as an attractant, but maybe just to hide those negative smells and if they are a scent based predator something like a scavenger something like a redfish black drum then having that scent is going to be even more important there we go hooked up again and i think this one is on the uh on the scented again i think he's got more than uh he's not by himself okay not as big as i thought <laughs> okay nice trout though i'm not gonna lie nice trout Come here, buddy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk some more about these scents. And one thing that is a misconception with scents that I see often is people only use scent on soft plastics. And that's a mistake, I believe. I use scent on everything. So all my hard baits, all my suspending lures, my twitch baits, my top waters, I'm using scent on it because I believe it does help. I believe it leaves that scent trail and it gives something for those fish to follow or something to identify it as an actual uh, food source. It's it's prey. It's not just a, a piece of plastic or a piece of metal or what it might be. Uh, when you have something that's identifiable um you know to the fish as it's you know it's something that's natural i think that's going to help so uh anytime that i am throwing an artificial lure i am using sense for sure Okay, so let's talk about pros and cons because with everything there's always pros and cons nothing is perfect so the pros to it is i believe that there's something to it i think that the 
you know, the, the scent either, you know, hides a negative smell, you know, something that you don't want them to smell, or it puts something out there that's going to attract the fish. And I think that's going to be the thing that's going to help that fish make that decision to bite your lure. So I do believe that there is some positives in that. Now, on the other side, on the cons, there are cons to it. So there is some monetary output that you got to do. You got to buy something, you know, something else that you got to buy. Although it's not expensive and a typical a bottle of scent can last a long time, it, it is at an added expense. Now, the other con, they can be messy. If anybody has ever spilt uh, fish oil or, you know, whatever it might be, some gulp or have some Procure or something like that in your vehicle, left it in a hot car overnight, whew, that is just a smell that you don't forget. It can stain too. Uh, so if you got a nice boat or you got uh, some carpet, some vinyl, something like that, some of these materials can stain. So you got to be careful with that. But as long as you're careful, you're not going to have these issues. So to me, I believe that the pros outweigh the cons. Uh, I think uh, what you get out of it is definitely greater uh, than what it costs you. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you think it outweighs the cons? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a morning. Um, it's uh, going to be hot today. It's supposed to be in the mid-90s, so I'm going to go ahead and get this thing loaded up so I'm not doing this in 90-degree weather. Uh, but uh, overall, the hands down, uh, the scent won, 3 nothing. So everything uh, that was caught was caught on scented lures. I did not get one bite, not one hit with the unscented lure, and I've had multiple shots at it. So so, um, I'll definitely say on today, today the scent won, the scent made a difference. And, and that's one thing I want to let you guys know that, you know, again, I like scent. I think it makes a difference on days like this. So we got bluebird skies, we got light wind, it's high pressure. Uh, days like this can be a little bit tough. So the little nuances can make a difference. So those scents, uh, different retrieves, profile shapes, all this stuff can make uh, can make a difference. And I think days like this, scent can make a difference. Now, if these fish are out here feeding like crazy, if you know you, every cast, uh, it's one after the other, I really don't think scent's gonna make that much of a difference. Uh, you know, I, I think it's just more for those days uh, where things get tough. So. Uh, you know, one day doesn't necessarily determine, you know, a rule. You know, it takes a long time, takes a lot of data to figure out one thing over the other. But because I have, you know, I've been fishing, you know, so long with scent, I am a believer. And one thing about it, I don't believe that there is a negative to the scent. I don't think that there's a negative side. And that's why I put it on everything. Um, so I'm curious to your opinions. Do you think there is a negative side uh, to putting scents on your lure? Because to me, it all seems upside. Okay, got the kayak loaded up and ready to go. We're gonna hit the highway. And uh, before I do, I just wanna let you know, if you're looking for a good scent, my favorite one to use is the Dr. Juice, and that is gonna be the Saltwater Slam scent. And the reason why I like that one is because it's oil-based, and that's the one that can encapsulate those negative smells and I think it does a really good job of that and I use it on absolutely everything been a big believer in it for a long time uh, so make sure to check that out at fishstrong.com and remember insiders get a huge discount off a of tackle at fishstrong.com so I'm gonna leave you with this question if you're someone that doesn't use scent you don't believe in scent I'd like to know why is there a reason uh, you just don't think it's gonna work or is there something else and if you are someone that uses scent what's your favorite which one do you like to use and are you very specific on the kinds of scents that you're looking for if you are using a crab lure, do you want a crab scent? If you're using a shrimp lure, do you want a shrimp scent? Or it doesn't matter, you just use whatever you got. Love to hear from you. Drop a comment down below. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something from it. And if you got any questions or comments, go ahead and put those down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, I really do appreciate you watching and I hope your next trip out there is gonna be a great one. Bye.